It's a joy and a privilege to worship the Lord. This day, even though we are in our homes, God's word has promised that when two or three are gathered, he is there with us. He is the Lord. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. We look up to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come to your presence to worship you. We thank you for all the goodness, for all the blessings that you have given us, Lord. At this time, Father, we pray and ask you, Lord, let this worship, let the words that we read from your word and meditate on it, let this be a time of blessing. Help us to feel the presence of the Almighty God in our lives. For as we worship together, let your mighty presence and peace fill our hearts. You're the King of Kings. You're the Lord of Lords. You're on the throne. And Father, we thank you for the privilege to be called your children, Lord. Let this worship and meditation be acceptable in your eyes we submit to your lordship in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ we pray amen amen he is lord he is lord he is lord he is lord he has risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He has risen from the dead and He's my Lord. Yes, my knee, yes, my knee shall bow and my tongue confess that Jesus is my Lord. Yes, my knee shall bow and my tongue confess that Jesus Jesus is my Lord. He is our strength. He is our provider. When I was weak, when I was lost in sin, Jesus came and took my sin upon himself on the cross. And so, I'm going to praise him, I'm going to worship him. You're my strength. When I am weak You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I seek You are my all in all Seeking you as a precious jewel Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool You are my all in all Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. 
You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all, Jesus, Lamb of God. Worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God. Worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, Worthy is your name Taking my sin Taking my sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I bless your name You are my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up When I am dry, you fill my cup You are my all in all Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. His name is worthy. We're going to sing this chorus, Come bless the Lord, all His servants of the Lord. It's a wonderful time to worship and praise the Lord. You're going to say, Lord, we're going to bless your name. We lift our hands and we worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come bless the Lord, all His servants of the Lord, who stand by now. In the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the holy place. Come bless the Lord and bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all the servants of the Lord who stand by night. In the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the holy place. Come bless the Lord and bless the Lord. He lifted me up from the miry clay and set my feet. On the rock to stay, He gave a song in my mouth to sing, a song of praise, a song of praise. He lifted me up from the miry clay and set my feet on the rock to stay. In my mouth to sing A song of praise A song of praise Oh, taste and see That the Lord is good Oh, taste and see That the Lord is good Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come 
bless the Lord, bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, all the servants of the Lord who stand by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the holy place, come bless the Lord, and bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4, it reads like this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We are divinely empowered to overcome all the works of the devil. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. Oh, they are mighty. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal. They are mighty in the Holy Ghost. They are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty. Oh, they are mighty. They are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty in the Holy Ghost. For the weapons of the warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. Oh, they are mighty. For the weapons of the warfare are not carnal. They are mighty in the Holy Ghost. They are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty. Oh, they are mighty. They are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty in the Holy Ghost. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over thee. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over thee. For the weapons of the warfare are not carnal, they are mighty, oh they are mighty. For the weapons of the warfare are not carnal, they are mighty in the Holy Ghost. They are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty, oh they are mighty. They are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. They are mighty in the Holy Ghost. How many of you will decide that you will live for Jesus day after day? I want to sing this beautiful chorus. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus, let come what may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus, let come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey, I live for Jesus, day after 
yesterday I live in Jesus day after day I live in Jesus all through the day the Holy Spirit I do obey I live in Jesus day after day Hallelujah It's a joy to worship the Lord Shall we pray before we go on to the word of God Loving Heavenly Father we thank you for giving us this opportunity Lord to worship you Lord our hearts are prepared to receive your word your word is a good seed and if it will come into our heart it will grow and bear fruit we bring everything and every person listening to this under the authority of the Holy Spirit in Jesus precious name we pray Amen Psalm 91 and verse 8 only with your eyes you shall look and see the retribution of the wicked the Bible speaks about reward or retribution it is frequently mentioned in the Bible I want to point out certain very important verses where God has promised a reward both for the just and for the wicked Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6 we read like this but you whenever you pray enter into your room and when you have shut your door pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly of late because we're not able to come together as a church gather together in one place many people's faith has diminished the prayer life has gone down but the Lord is reminding you that it is time that you switch off from all the news that is happening around you and go into your closet, close the door and look up to the Lord and say, Father, I have come to your presence. Father, your word says that you will reward openly. If there is something that is bothering your heart today, the Lord says he wants you to go into your prayer closet, close the door and pray and ask him, to intervene in your situation and the Lord will do it. He's a God who rewards secret prayers openly. Matthew chapter 6 and verses 3 and 4 it says like this, When you do charitable giving, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your charitable giving will be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Again we see this word, God will reward your giving. These days we see a lot of people giving a lot of things to uh, people who are suffering. But the sad thing is, it's all photographed, documented, and it is shared in the social media. But the Bible says, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So, some people say, I have lack in my life. How can I give? But if you will learn to look carefully around, as long as you live, you will always find someone who is not as well as you. There are people who are always in need. Look to them and do whatever you can to help them. The Bible says you will have your reward if you will do it secretly now I'm going to point out to a particular person who was an expert in secret prayer and secret giving turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 4 and Cornelius looked intently at the angel and became fearful he said what is it Lord and he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now here is a Roman centurion, a Roman. He's got a 
authority. He is a man over a hundred soldiers. But this man found time to pray. He found time to do his arms. And the Bible beautifully says that it reached the presence of God and God sent down his angel to this man. Because if you will obey, the little that you have understood, the Lord will reveal greater things about himself and his will in your life. But not all the Roman soldiers were like Cornelius. Luke chapter 3 and verse 14. We hear about the preaching of John the Baptist. He says, Likewise, the soldiers also were asking him, saying, And what shall we do? And John the Baptist said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse anyone falsely and be content with your wages. We see people who misuse their authority. All authority is given by God. He has given it to you so that you will use it properly. But we see a lot of people who use their authority in the wrong way. That's why John the Baptist looked at the soldiers and said, Number one, don't intimidate anyone. Don't use your God-given authority to do something wrong. Your authority has been given to you so that you will help people, maintain law and order, do good to people, not the other way around. The second thing is, he looked at soldiers and told them, Do not accuse anyone falsely. Just go to the social media and look at the number of messages that are there. Messages of accusations. He did this. She did this. He is wrong. She is wrong. Accusations don't come from God. It, it is the work of Satan. Accusing people falsely. And the third most important thing is that he said, be content with your wages. Be content with your wages. And for whatever we do, there is always a reward. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, we read like this. Say ye of the righteous, that it shall be well with him. For they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked! It shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. In these two verses, we read about two different kinds of people and two different rewards. One is the righteous, the other is the wicked. Two different kinds of people. And what is their reward? Number one, he says, it shall be well with him. And to the wicked, the word says, it shall be ill with him. God's people... We need to really understand that whatever we do has an impact, has a consequence. So let us choose to do right in the eyes of the Lord. Let me illustrate this through another incident. Book of Esther, chapter 3 and verse 5, we read like this. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not down, nor did him reverence. Then was Haman full of wrath. Who is this guy? This Haman is the man who is next to the king. He was a man of great influence, great authority. But whenever he left the palace, there was a man sitting at the gate of the palace, and his name was Mordecai, who refused to bow down to him. Now Haman, in spite of all his power and authority and influence, found this very insulting. And so he was angry. The Bible speaks in Psalm 37, verses 8 and 9. It says, let go of anger, leave rage behind. Do not be preoccupied. It only leads to evil. Let go of anger, let leave rage behind. Do not be preoccupied. Only leads to evil. Ninth verse says, evildoers will be cut off from their inheritance, but those who wait with hope for the Lord will inherit the land. Now this is a great promise. But Haman was not a man who would just let go of his anger, but he wanted to do something about this man Mordecai. 
In Esther chapter 3 verse 6 we read like this, And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom, even the people of Mordecai. So what did this man Haman do? He prepared gallows in his own house, which was 75 feet high. Just imagine. We don't know the height of Mordecai. Maybe let's say six feet. The Jews are generally tall people. But this man, Haman, wanted to show the people of the land that he was a man who expected everyone to reverence him. And if they fail to respect him, he would do what he has planned to do for Mordecai to all the people. So he made an extraordinary gallows, 75 feet in height, in his own home. But praise God, Mordecai was a man who believed in the Almighty God. And he fasted and prayed. And he said, Lord, heaven and earth, you are able to see this evil that is planned against me and our people. And God intervened. Praise God, we have a God who is able to turn around the situations. When you pray, God listens and rewards. The book of Esther, chapter 7 and verse 10. When people prayed, God turned things around. The Bible says, So Haman was hanged on the gallows that he had built for Mordecai. Then the king's anger cooled down. Now this is a very important aspect that we need to learn. Whatever we do has a reward. God sees, God hears and God rewards. The righteous man has his reward. The Mordecai was blessed, was raised up. Haman, who had uncontrollable anger and rage and who was a man who had an evil plan, was put in the same gallows that he had made for Mordecai. The people of God, we need to learn this day that whatever we do, Whatever we do, the Lord is our rewarder. The Lord looks at our actions and He also knows our intentions. Let me recap what we learned this day. The Bible says, only with your eyes you will see the reward of the wicked. Wicked people will be there as long as this earth exists. But as a child of God, you will only see with your eyes what actually happens to the wicked people. We read about two kinds of soldiers. One was Cornelius, a man who prayed in secret, a man who gave in secret. And God rewarded him openly by sending an angel to him to lead him to salvation, to lead him to a greater life. And we also read about the other soldiers who never bothered to do whatever Cornelius wanted to do. But then we also learned about Haman and Mordecai. Now it is up to you. I have placed two groups of people in front of you. You can choose to be Mordecai, a man of prayer, a man who fears God, a man who would refuse to do evil. And, or you could be Haman, a man who is filled with rage and anger. And he wants to get his things done. And he would use his influence in whatever wrong way it is possible. But I, let me tell you, the wicked will be entrapped in their own devices. Because the Lord whom we worship is a King of kings and Lord of lords. Let me close again with Psalm chapter 91 and verse 8. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the retribution of the wicked or the reward of the wicked. Shall we close our eyes and look to the Lord? Let's take a few moments and look into our heart. 
what is the condition of our heart is our life pleasing to god do we have the habit of secret prayer and secret giving if your life is straight and good before the eyes of the lord the lord will definitely bless you and he will keep your feet from every trap that the enemy makes for you if haman hadn't made that 75 feet high gallows he wouldn't have died in it shall we pray loving heavenly father we come to your throne of grace lord we know we are living in wicked times but father the choice is open before us either to do good or to do evil thank you for your promise that we will see the reward of the wicked with our own eyes but help us to make the right kind of choices in our life father as your servant i bless every person who listen to this message let them learn to use their authority in the right way let them learn to do their arms to pray in secret to receive their answer in the open I pray that everyone will choose like Mordecai and be blessed like Mordecai and see with their own eyes the reward of the wicked. Come at everyone into your precious hands. We give glory, honor and praise to your precious name. In Jesus name we pray.